is Marvin. Um, I'm VP Marketing at Ada Health. Um, thanks for the introduction, James. And today I'm talking about how to scale app marketing with Agile teams. Um, three years ago, I started at a company called Ada. Some of you might have heard about Ada already. Um, Ada's vision is actually to give everybody in the world access to personalized health and um, health information through the help of AI technology. And when I started at Ada, my first big task was actually to, to launch the Ada app and to find out how to find the first user. Um, and um, luckily, over the past three years, um, the teams have grown Ada to over 8 million users. Um, Ada is now the fastest growing medical app in the world and also the most rated uh, medical app in the world. And today I'm talking about what we've learned over the past, um, what went well when it comes to scaling not just the number of users, but also the number of teams and um, how you might be able to learn from that. So I'm starting by um, showing you something that's probably a bit familiar to you already, um, what traditional marketing teams look like and why they are mostly set up in this way. So when you have an app and when you try to launch an app and get some users, you usually start by having performance marketers in your team who are working on setting up campaigns, analyzing these campaigns and optimizing these campaigns. And over time you might add a few more of them. Some of them might work on display campaigns, some of them might work on search campaigns or on app store optimization. And very often, performance marketers then realize it would be nice to actually have somebody who's not just specialized in performance marketing, but also somebody who can improve the quality of the creatives. So for instance, your ads. And that's why a lot of user acquisition teams actually add designers to their teams at the very early stage. And that usually includes designers working on, on video ads um, for user acquisition, on testing screenshots for App Store optimization or also working on static banners. But then very often you are faced with a challenge when it comes to scaling your app across geographies and also languages. Because very often you have the difficulty not having a native speaker either in the design team or in the performance marketing team who's able to speak the language in which you would like to launch the Ada app. So for example, when we launched Ada in, um, in East Africa, we wanted to have somebody who's able to speak Kiswahili. And obviously, first of all, it's hard to find somebody speaking Kiswahili in Berlin, but it's even harder to find somebody who is a Kiswahili speaker and also a designer or a performance marketing manager. So that's why most um, user acquisition teams, they hire some sort of copywriters or content creators to make sure um, that you actually have the language capabilities in your team. So as you can see, traditional marketing teams are usually set up around skills. Um, so somebody has a skill to design, somebody has a skill to write, and another person has the skill to bring that together and to create campaigns. Now, when you prioritize skills over targets, um, you usually have a lot of challenges when it comes to scalability, meaning getting from one user to a few million users in a specific time. Um, as you know, um, probably for most of you, some of the KPIs or some of the targets are listed here sound familiar. So one goal for you might be to increase the number of app signups. Um, another goal might be to increase the number or to increase the traffic to your website or to increase overall user engagement. Now, the main challenge when you have traditional marketing teams that are organized by skills rather than organized by targets is the question of ownership and accountability. So if you look at these three targets here, and I'm very sure some of you or even most of you work towards these targets, the question is who owns these targets? Are they owned by performance marketers? Are they owned by designers? Are they owned by copywriters, analysts, or even somebody else in your team? Or are they owned by all of them together? So what we found out over time at Ada is that creating agile teams really solves the problem of ownership. And um, we also identified that by having agile teams, we were much easier set up for scale. Um, so one team we have, for instance, at Ada is a team that focuses on our awareness targets. So for instance, making sure that we meet our overall increased brand awareness KPIs, which may include um, 
doing work on employer branding, doing work on out-of-home campaigns. Some of you have even seen some of our ADA ads in the Berlin subway stations already. We have a team focusing on just increasing traffic to our website and making sure that we convert website visitors into app users. We have another team focusing on user acquisition, and many of them are here in the room, so you can ask them some nice questions um, after the presentation. So they're making sure that we acquire app users across geographies and across languages. We have a team focusing on retention, so making sure that those users we have acquired also stick with ADA and do not churn. Um, we have a team for social media, making sure that everything that we would like to share about our company, about milestones, um, get, gets posted out there on our social media channels, and also that we have a way to acquire users organically. And we have a customer experience team, which really builds the bridge between marketing and product in our company, making sure that we analyze user feedback and even build products and features out of them. Now you can see that this is the setup that we have now and it's very much focused on targets or very much focused on output rather than input. So for us that means now that every of Every one of this team can function like a mini company, basically. They have enough tools and resources to focus on targets and to be completely independent from another team. Um, so that means if one team is focusing on user acquisition, another team can focus on driving traffic to the website, and they don't need to fight for resources. Now, one big advantage that we have here is that teams can really focus on, on their goals and targets, but the challenge we are, were still facing in the past was how do we make sure that we have the same kind of quality across the teams? Um, and that's why we added chapters. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the terms chapters already. If not, I'm telling you in a bit what that means. Now, every of our team at Ada has at least one copywriter. Um, and the copywriters sit in the marketing content chapter. And what it means for us is basically that now every of this team speaks the same written language. So we have set up guidelines for written content in every single language. And that also means that there's a lot of exchange between teams when it comes to content marketing, to copy creation, when it comes to translation. So teams do not work in isolation, again, when it comes to the creation of content. The same applies for design. So in the past, we had the issue that Agile teams or independent teams could focus on their goals and targets, but they were speaking a very different design language. So, for instance, we had illustrations in the App Store that look very different from the illustrations that we have on the website due to the fact that we had different designers with different skills and also different interests. Now, having a so-called design chapter allows us now to have designers in each of these Agile teams they all stick to the same brand guidelines, they all stick to the same design guidelines, and therefore we can really make sure that the design is harmonized across the teams. That also means that designers do not need to reinvent the wheel constantly when they think about how big an app icon should be, how big um, Play Store banners should be when I place them on my, on my assets. So the output really increases over time. And the last chapter is basically our specialist chapter, and um, they're also special in a way that um, they're, they cannot be found in every team. So while every of our teams has at least one designer and one copywriter, there are some teams, for instance, like the website team, who only has a um, SEO manager in it as a specialist or a web developer in it. And obviously, we do not need web developers and SEO managers in the social media team, but it's very important that they can still exchange insights and learnings. So for us, it's, for instance, very important that we analyze the learnings and insights from an SEO manager on how to optimize landing pages and meta descriptions to get more traffic to the website, and basically then share these insights with people working on App Store optimization and how to make the best out of the keywords. So if I'm coming now to the last minutes of my short presentation today, there are basically three tips um, um, I can give to anybody who would like to restructure their marketing department. So the first one is um, to really encourage a growth mindset. So really ask yourself if you're happy with the current number of your users for your app, if you think that you're happy with a few million, or if you're just happy when you have scaled to a few hundred of millions of users. 
then you should really ask yourself a second question, um, if your current team structure is ready to scale or not. Um, and for us, it's really important to encourage a growth mindset. That really means that people should be should be comfortable dealing with change and also happy about the fact that they are growing, not just as a company, but also in terms of the users. Um, I think another important learning that I can, or, or advice that I can give for everybody is to really focus on company targets when it comes to set up your, your marketing teams or your app growth teams instead of skills. So really focusing on the output instead of the input. So a skill is, as I said, a designer, for instance, or a performance marketer, or a copywriter. These are all skills that focus on the input. But if you turn it around and just look at the output, what you want to achieve as a target, you first of all create much more ownership. And you also avoid um, a lot of overlaps when it comes to targets and accountability. To give you an example, Everyone in the, in the Agile teams that we have, whether it's a performance marketer, a designer, an SEO manager, they clearly understand all the company targets, they clearly understand how to reach them. So in traditional marketing teams, it's very rare that you, for instance, find a designer who tells you, I just increased the App Store visit to install rate by 37% um, by changing um, an A-B test here in the Google Play Store in Australia, right? So this is typically something that you hear from a performance marketing manager from an analyst or maybe from a data scientist but it's rarely that you or it's, it's very rare that you find these kind of uh, discussions with uh, designers or even copywriters so the learnings really really um, accelerate here um, another important advice that I could give when it comes to scaling um, app departments or app growth departments is to really introduce chapters. And that what it basically means is make sure whenever you divide your teams by targets that every team shares at least a large number of the same skills so that you can make sure that every of the teams um, sticks to the same guidelines when it comes to visual output, to written output, um, when it comes to sharing numbers, when it comes to um, doing ads and launching campaigns. And the other big advantage here is that with the mix of chapters and targets that you can address both short-term targets but also long-term targets because you do not have the issue of fighting over resources if you have dedicated teams for each output. I think that's it. Um, I have one minute left, so one and a half minutes left. So um, thank you very much. And um, yeah, I talked a lot about um, sharing insights and about the advantages of it. So um, I guess you will have a lot of chances sharing insights today. And if you have any more questions, you will find me after the presentation here as well. Thank you.